Hello, everybody. Uh, it's Dr. Rick here. Look, I'm going to get right to the point. First of all, if you uh, are impressed or you are empowered, encouraged, inspired, informed by the content that you find on this channel, this page, wherever you may see this, please click the like button, uh, click the share button, subscribe and follow. Second, uh, we have been for some time pushing a fundraiser that hasn't really gotten any traction, uh, but we're still pushing. Uh, when I say haven't, you, we've got a couple of people who've given, but uh, nowhere near the goal. I think we are at 320 out of the initial goal uh, of 10,000. I think I pushed this week just to hit 7,500, but we're at 320 dollars. Uh, if you followed me for any time you know the work I do in the community you know the extensive research I've done uh, the programs some of you have either come directly for resources and help or referred people on a number of different uh, areas from domestic violence to uh, rental assistance to mental health resources to troubled youth especially young black boys to helping children get out of situations in schools uh, i've gone to war with school districts about policies that tended to target young african-american males in multiple cities so again if you believe in the work we're doing we're asking for you to support the work we're doing today i want to talk to you about a topic that i have for years been passionate about anyone who knows me knows I'm passionate about the proper racial socialization of young black males you know that I am adamant about the need to prepare and build strong black male men by uh, effectively socializing and developing young boys I also have a passion about uh, African-American intimate partner violence uh, it's something that I've written about. It's something that I've lectured on. It's programs that I've offered. Uh, I have been consistent in my message. We need to protect our women and children. Uh, and in, in some instances, our men, because there are men who are victims of domestic violence. As a matter of fact, the statistics reveal that when it comes to African-American men and African-American women, they are equally alike they are equally likely to assault one another 22 percent 23 percent for women 24 percent for men uh the difference is when a man chooses to become aggressive he has the capacity to cause cause for more damage so we see a lot more death and extreme injury from uh male assault Either way, here's the thing. It's a problem in our community. Here's what the, the numbers bear out. That the second leading cause of death for black females between 15 and 44 is intimate partner homicide. Uh, that's literally someone losing their life to someone who should have been the person protecting them. Um, in recent events point to a mindset that is troubling and that is a mindset from black men that find reasons to justify harming a black woman and i will double down on what i said um over the last week with the, the different things that have gone on that the only time a black man can ever be justified in harming a black woman is when he is defending his life or the life of someone else that they are about to harm anything else outside of defense from personal harm or harm of another is out of line what she said what she's done her past how she carries herself how she behaves can all be handled by simply removing yourself from her presence by if necessary calling the authorities and having her removed if she's in a space that you occupy and you no longer want her there but what cannot be done is a continued mindset that it is okay 
to harm black women because the little idiosyncrasies and idiosyncrasies and nuances that are being added as reasons and justifications for harming black women are not going to be interpreted by the younger generation in a manner that they see it or you're trying to present it. It's going to be interpreted as if I feel like I'm being mishandled by a woman, I have the right to. And no, you don't. If you're dealing with someone that is not treating you the way you deserve to be treated, remove yourself. Remove yourself. Keep it moving. Being rejected, losing a relationship is painful. It is not justification to harm the person who decided they no longer wanted to be with you. Having someone cheat on you is definitely a, 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 an intensively powerful form of betrayal and can be immensely painful. But again, it does not justify taking a person's life. Let them move on because they've revealed to you that they don't possess the character and the values that you are demanding in a relationship and you need to find someone who does. One of the things that comes with manhood is the ability to manage our emotions. Now, notice I didn't say we don't have emotions. Notice I didn't say that that should be a void of emotion, that we shouldn't feel, that we shouldn't acknowledge that we hurt. We shouldn't acknowledge that we have moments. I didn't say that. I said that what a part of our masculinity is the capacity to manage those emotions when they are triggered so that we can still perform our duties and our responsibilities as men. And that is to stand up and protect, provide, be coverings, create the right space environment for healthy development in our women and our children. That's our responsibility. And if the environment isn't safe, then there's going to be a level of hostility, anxiety, and a bunch of other things that exist that can cause all types of outcomes that nobody's going to be happy with. If we are going to grow as a people, we're going to have to acknowledge this. One of the reasons I created Black Men Men, the primary reason I created the Black Men Lead Rite of Passage Initiative is to properly racially socialize young black men because it reduces their proclivity towards violence. It just so happens that it also improves another a, a number of other outcomes. It reduces the dropout rate, reduces incarceration rates, reduces recidivism rates, and it increases their uh, chance of developing skills that will allow them to earn a living wage uh, and, and support a family. So it's so huge, but we are going to have to be willing to acknowledge that there's a problem. This isn't giving black women a pass to act and behave and do whatever they want to do. There should be a standard of behavior on both sides. What I am saying is it, harming a black woman can't be to the go to when she doesn't do what you think she should. Using a woman's past as justification to harm her when you feel the need can no longer be acceptable we are going to have to sit up and say you know what i don't like what you're doing i don't want to have nothing to do with that that's trash that's whatever it is that that's unacceptable if it's unacceptable then you disassociate you move away from you you, you call it out you dismiss it but you don't take that as a license to harm that person and that is something that really, truly is troubling to me, is that it's too easy for us to become violent with the very ones we're supposed to be defending. And defending something and standing in your role is not a, doesn't have a contingency based on the person. Your role and your character and your integrity as a man is based on you not what everybody else does. It's based on you despite what everybody does. How are you going to carry yourself in the most intense, inadvantageous, 
uh, troubling times. How do you move when things aren't going your way? Where do you stand when it seems everything around you is not on shaky ground? I mean, well, on shaky ground. How do you determine what your next move is? Are you going to be the same person? Are you going to stand for what you know is right? Are you going to stand for what you know is right? Look. I could talk about this all day. We've got to do better. I can't give you any um I mean, I, I could, but it's either we're going to get it or we're not. It's either we're going to start moving and acting and behaving and doing the things we need to do. It's, it's, it's are we as men going to call out men who aren't in line? Are we going to step back and say, that's not my business? Are we as men going to stand up and say, you know what? I need to make sure that my sons know how to carry themselves. Are we as men going to sit up and say, look, I need to search myself and see if I'm being the best version of myself and doing the things that are going to improve my home, my family, my community, and the, co the black collective as a whole. The, response of the social responsibility is lacking. The social accountability is lacking. And ladies, we need to be doing the same thing on the other side. Are we really, truly moving the way we need to move? Are we operating in a way that's going to advance us to do the things that we need to be doing as a collective? We need to get out of this individualized, narcissistic, selfish mindset that it's only about what I want, what I need, and how I feel. And understand that there's a greater purpose that we're supposed to be striving to fulfill and a greater plan that we should be trying to implement uh, again. This is my call and challenge to you. It's time to stand up. Uh, it's time to step out there and start actually doing things that we are capable of doing. On that note, look, I'm going to get ready to get out of here again. I'm asking for your support on this thing. We're pushing uh, to hit this number. If you believe in the work we're doing, if you believe that there's a need for that work, uh, that uh, there is potential in that work, show your love there's so much work to be done uh, I, I i did a video about that yesterday if you want to check it out you can look at it but i'm not going to go into great detail but we need your support we can't keep sitting on our hands on that note i'm out of here you guys have an unbelievable remainder of your day